That's, That's right. what it's all about, reaching the world with the good news. And what did she say, the daughter said to mama, mama, you're in the music industry, you do something about it. Could that be a word to the rest of us? I mean, wherever we are, shouldn't we be doing something about getting the good news out? Well, here's a man who is doing all he can do about it, and here, he's here to tell us the rest of the story. Please welcome from Dallas, Texas, Mr. Kirk Franklin. <laughs> Brother, God bless you, good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. All right. You know, many people think, well, this is like overnight success for you, but uh, this really isn't uh, overnight success, is it? Well, I, I don't consider con uh, success at all. You know, I don't really determine um, what God does uh, material-wise as success. You know, I mean, for me, just waking up, you know, to see another day from where I come from is all the success I need. You know, everything else is just gravy. You know, if, if it comes, it comes. And, you know, uh, success for me is just waking up knowing that salvation is still intact and my joy is still there. Hey, you know? that's good news. Yeah. You were kind of, um, I guess, a child prodigy. I mean, 11 years old, you were a music minister? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like 11, directing choirs with people 50 and 60 years old in a choir, you know. I'm trying to tell these old people to sing and they don't want to sing because I'm like, you know, like, I got kids your age, you know. You can't make me sing, you know. So, you know, it was a challenge, you know. How did you get into that? I mean, how did that, what led to that? Well, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, the musical ability, you know, the God-given talent, you know, was, was, was more productive than, than the age, you know, and I was a kid, but had, you know, these, you know, grown up, you know, gifts. And so, you know, it was, trust me, it was a battle, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to go to the football games, but I had choirs. So, <laughs> so you know, it, it was a challenge, but at the same time, it kept me, I believe now, looking back, it kept me out of a lot of things that, that really could have destroyed me. But, but you nevertheless, turned away from the yeah. things and into some of the things yeah. that could very well have destroyed you. Yeah, because, you know, growing up, you know, I was labeled as a church boy. You know, I was always in church, always working with music, and I wanted to prove, you know, to, to my little buddies, you know, around the neighborhood, because I grew up in a very, you know, bad neighborhood that I wanted to be, you know, just like them. I wanted to be hard. And so I got into a lot of trouble, and I forced myself, you know, to get into to trouble, you know, so. I know about that. I was a preacher's kid, and you had to show that the rest of the world that just because your daddy was crazy yeah. didn't mean you were. Yeah. So I know exactly where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah. I mean, I have so many PK, you know, friends, friends. and it's like, something's wrong with y'all. Y'all yeah. need help. <laughs> I mean, but I, you know. Well, what was it that finally brought you to the point where you could see that this was a dead end street you were going down? Well, the funny part about everything is that even when I was doing whatever I was doing, I was faking. I mean, it wasn't real. You know, when I would go out and do what the other guys were doing, I know it really wasn't inside of me, mm. but I still tried to do it. You know, it's like I had to force myself to be like that, you know, like them. And then after a while, you know, it, it, it wore off because a friend of mine got killed. And when he got killed, when he got shot, I was 15. And I realized, you know, I mean, because growing up in church, you know, there's a heaven and there's a hell. You know it, you know, you can pretend like you don't know it, but you know it. And that situation uh, just, you know, hit a button inside of me and made me realize that if I don't do something now, it's over. You know, Kirk, there's a lot of young people who are doing that. And, and you know, I, I would not have admitted at the time that I was doing exactly what you're talking about. But there are a lot of guys out there who, who really don't. A lot of girls who are involved in premarital sex, they don't really want to, but they are like, well, you know, if I'm going to be hip, if I'm going to, you know, be with it, I've got to go ahead and do this Yeah, thing. yeah. But, you know, the biggest problem is, is that we feel as young people, especially in the 90s, is that a lot of times the church, the church does a lot of criticizing. but. But nowadays, what the church needs to do is reach out and not forget that there are a lot of, you know, 40, 50-year-old people in the church that when they were 15 and they were 20, they weren't saints. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the young people need to hear that testimony. The young people need to hear the testimony for you to say, listen, when I was young, I made some mistakes. But through the blood of Jesus, you know, through the prayers of my mother and my father, God delivered, you know, instead of walking around, you need to do it, you know, you're devil, you're going to, I mean, young people don't need, young people need to know that you've been there. So that gives them hope of saying, through that same blood, that same power, you know, that same blood that never loses its power. It was strong enough for you, it can be strong enough for me. And not only that, but one of the good news uh, items here is that the gospel is a, has a keeping power. I mean, if you grow up in the church, and if you really are born again, I don't mean just a church member, but if you really are yeah. born again, yeah. the gospel has the power to keep you from all yeah. this stuff. We need to teach young people how to fall in love with Jesus. And, 
And when you fall in love with somebody, it's not an infatuation. You know what I mean? It's, it's even when you uh, don't say the things that I want to hear. Because the gospel doesn't always say, <laughs> it, it doesn't always say what we want to hear. But when you fall in love with it, you do it because you know it's good for you. Absolutely. But when you have an infatuation with it, when it says something you don't want to hear, you just close it up and you go do what you want to do. But when you fall in love with it. You know. Isn't it amazing how when God starts to move in your life, what he ends up doing is so much greater than anything you could imagine. Your first record, I mean, when you were doing your thing, it never occurred to you that God might be grooming you to do something significant. Well, I have a hard time saying what other people see. So, you know, I, I don't see uh, what's going on with the album. I, I try not to see it because I've seen so many people destroyed by their own success. So many people, you know, their heads blow up, they forget you know, what's mm. going on, you know, they forget their redeemer and they've lost the prize. And when you really lose focus of the ministry, I mean, everything else, you know, it's all sound and brass and tinkling cymbal. And I'm too young, you know, to get caught up in that. It's the first album, you know, if God's doing whatever he's doing with it, that's between God and the people. I'm just a vessel. I have no gifts. I have no abilities. I don't consider myself to be talented. You know what I'm saying? I consider myself to be a mantle that somewhere along the line, I met Jesus and my conviction to love him was so great enough that he pulled me out and used me only for a season. And after this season, it'll be somebody else's. All of God's people said, amen. Well, that's exactly the way it works. <clears throat> but given what was God good. is. That was nice. I like to hear that. <laughs> Clapping. Would you like that again? <laughs> yeah, if I said it one, no, no, just one. But given what God is doing in your life for a season, mm -hmm. what is this season like now for Kirk Franklin and the family? Uh, this season for myself and the family, which I've got to say, I mean, those are my babies. I call them babies. These folk are older than me, but I call them my babies. <laughs> why, mean, why, would, why, why did you call them the family? I mean, could you call them... You know, the gospel heirs or something. Why are you calling them? Because that's ugly, first of all. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's my family. I mean, I mean, there are people in that family that act like my mothers. There are people in that family that, that when I'm wrong, they love me enough to say, you're wrong. You're my leader, but you, you need to get that thing right. That's family, man. You know, I mean, you know, I don't have family. So, so when I look at those people, those people, I mean, make me feel so unworthy to be around them. You, you say you don't have family. You're... Your father and mother? What about them? Your father left? Yeah. And then your mother left? Yeah. So you were raised? I was adopted. I was adopted at the age of four by a 64-year-old woman. Mm. And uh, I was a kid. I used to watch y'all. When I was growing up, I used to watch y'all. But uh, she raised me. And uh, she raised me to fear God. And um, it was just she and I. And so, you know, family. I didn't have a sense of family, you know? So a lot of times my family was the streets, you know? Mm. I mean, I grew up with kids that at, at 11 and 12, we, we were smoking weed, not just them, but myself. We were running the streets, we were doing wrong, you know, we were getting into trouble, and, and I, I almost became a product of my environment. Yeah. But now you have a family that stays, helps you keep on the right Through track. the grace of God, yeah, yeah. Hey. You guys can do some more music for us in a minute? Yeah. All right. Kirk Franklin fan will be back with more. But ladies and gentlemen, before you go anywhere, let me point out to you that what we're talking about here is not religion. It's not because of some slavish adherence to a set of rules and regulations that somebody wrote down somewhere. What we're talking about is the power of the gospel yeah. to transform your life. Yeah. Jesus Christ will change your life. Now, we're not talking about just making you religious and getting you in church. We're talking about the fact that the reason you go to church is because you want to be around other people who have the same kind of love relationship with God that you have. That's why you go to church. It's not going to church that saves you. I mean, well, people say, well, I've been in church ever since I was two. I mean, if you were in a garage for 40 years, that would make you a Buick. I mean, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> what we're talking about is making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Yeah. And how does that happen? By simply acknowledging what the Bible says about every single one of us. Whether you've been smoking weed or running the streets or doing your thing, or whether you grew up in a good family and you've always been a good person and you've always served on the usher board, but you've never made Jesus Christ your personal Savior, then you're lost. Because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what's the solution? Jesus. You ask Him into your life. Confess what the Bible says. Yes, God, you're right. I am a sinner, and I'm sorry, and I don't want to live apart from you any longer. So I'm giving my life to you, and I'm asking you to come into my life. Live your life in me, 
And I'm asking you, Jesus, to be my Savior, to be the Lord of my life. And then just very simply thank Him for doing what He said He would do. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Let me give you a telephone number. And if you'd like to talk to someone more about that, you can by calling that number 1-800-759-0700. And somebody's there to talk to you about what God wants to do in your life. How many of you know that Jesus is the precious Lamb of God? And His blood never loses its power. This holiday season, this is who we worship. Now. Now we hold the Lamb. Hallelujah. The precious, the precious Lamb of God. Born into sin that I'm Not tomorrow, but now. Now behold the Lamb. He's the precious Lamb of God. The precious Lamb of God. Born into sin. Born into sin that I may live again. He's the precious. The precious Lamb of God. And he's also holy. Holy is the Lamb. How many of you know that he is holy? The precious Lamb of God. Why you love me? Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. The precious Lamb. Let's say it again, family. Let's say it again. Come on. Holy. Yeah. Holy is the Lamb. He's your Savior. He's your Redeemer. The precious Lamb. I shall never know. I shall never know. Precious. The precious Lamb of God. Sing for us now. Let us sing. Now behold the Lamb. He's the precious Lamb of God. Born into sin. When I always said, when I always didn't do <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. I went left, he told me to go right. But I'm standing, set. But I'm standing right here. Yeah. Everybody, thank you for the set. Thank you for the Thank you for the land. Thank you for the land. Oh, the precious land of God. The cause of your grace. Say Because of your grace. I am the grace. Thank you, Jesus. The precious land of God. Come on, David. Just standing right here. But I'm standing right here. In the midst. In the midst of all my tears. What do you say, baby?
how you love me so. I'll never know Jesus. Hey, yeah. show them that no matter what the holiday brings them that they don't have to go to the world to find the type of joy that they want to find yeah. but the rhythms and the beat that they always look for in other stations we've got it right here That's yeah. right. and it, this holiday season it goes a little something like this Call Pat Robinson and tell him. Uh. Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes. Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Chris. Oh, yes, he is. I don't need yeah. material things.
battle. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Say who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. Say who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. I say who got the praise? We got the praise. And who we give the praise to? Jesus. Say who got the praise? We got the praise. Call the 700 Club and tell them. He, he, yeah. he, he, Franklin and the family.